guys, welcome back to my beautiful channel where the lighting is changing because there's clouds. And my cat is here. Cal? She's so sassy, she just, she doesn't even want to say hello today. She's so over it. Today's exciting for many reasons. One being the fact that, holy crap, I don't really like the month of September and I'm glad that it's over. And now we can talk about some of my favorite things from this month. And I actually have like a lot of stuff. I have like things like leaning and falling off my desk and some cool food things to talk about. So probably get excited, because we're about to do this, and my cat is here. I mean, what more does a video need? I think that's about it. Why don't we talk about the one thing I liked that's makeup this month. This is a little sample, baby mascara sample, baby. Mm. This is by Lancome, and it's the Hypnos uh, Custom Volume Mascara in black. I love this mascara, and if I wasn't like the cheapest person that I know, I would probably go and buy it, but I'm the cheapest person I know, so. But I love it. It's beautiful. The wand is everything. The formula is great. It makes my lashes look literally like there's a thousand of them, and I love it, personally. Cal, thoughts? Okay, so skincare-wise, I have mentioned this several times in the past, but I have to mention it again because I actually stopped using this for like... I would say the whole summer and I don't know the specific reason I don't think there really was a specific reason but I noticed my skin was looking like ridiculously dull and when I say dull it's like is that skin or is that paper I don't know like it just looked bad my skin looked bad so I was like girl I'm gonna start using this again this is the Clinique moisture surge overnight mask and I talked about this, like I said, a gabajillion times. That is a number. And basically what you do is you do your regular skincare routine. You put your moisturizer on. You wash your face, whatever. And then you put this on top and you go to bed. And it is an overnight face mask. And it is beautiful. When you wake up, your skin is literally like glowing from within. For me, it takes a couple of uses because I have like ridiculously dry skin. But I can't say enough good things about this. Like I really truly think that I would marry this. This is random. My sister actually made this for me, and I believe that she sells these on her website, but I'm not exactly s certain. I was going to say sure, but I was going in the wrong direction. Basically, this is probably one of my favorite pieces that I have of hers. I'm trying to think. I really like that too. I have so much of her stuff in my room, um, and I love it because, for those of you who don't know, my sister is a ceramicist. She has an Instagram. You can check her out her stuff there, and you can check out her website. I'll put do both of them down below. but. I love this thing and I use it actually for makeup brushes so I just think it's beautiful like hi yeah I want one of these one of my favorite things this month I've just recently been like wow yeah we have clothing favorites this month now hold your horses everyone this is very exciting I don't do this every month this that must mean that September was very special I went to Zara and I got a massive bag how I feel like they selectively give out paper bags like they, I always get the, sh the crappy like plastic ones and I'm like, okay, I'm obsessed with this. I don't know why and I don't even know if it really looks good on me. I'll wear it in a video, you guys can tell me. This is a turtleneck. What now? What now? I kind of already dress like I'm 90 years old. So like to start wearing turtlenecks is not like the most shocking, surprising thing. It's like, oh, Emily is wearing her grandma's sweater. Cool. Like, yeah, I am. What does it matter to you, huh? I wore this out the other night and I honestly felt like very French. I was also wearing a braid though so I think that might have done it but I love this. I feel like it's very chic and classy and Zara has like the most beautiful things. I think it's like the most favorite of favorite stores ever. I want everything. Okay? And the other thing I got from them is actually a blanket scarf. I have wanted one of these since last winter and I remember seeing all these girls at my school wearing them and I was like oh my gosh like you look amazing I want to literally have a scarf so thick that I can't move my neck and so I got this one and it's like I guess it's like gray black brown it's like all colors so you can really wear it with anything like hi I'm ready for Boston let's go it's it also doubles as a neck brace dual function therefore I spent the money it actually is like a legitimate blanket. Like if I didn't know Zara was a clothing store and I walked in and I saw this, I'd be like, oh, blanket store. That'll be in probably every video for the rest of my life. I'm going to just include it. Blanket scarf. Food. I hope none of you are allergic to nuts. Because I'm not. Um, I love peanuts. And I love that they're a quick source of protein, that I can eat them, they're good fat. I really, really am not like afraid of fat. I know some people are like, oh, avocado has fat. Oh, nuts have fat. 
Well, I really think that that fat, that healthy fat, is actually like amazing for you. So I do eat a fair amount of nuts and avocado. Like that's my fave. These are from freaking Costco, man. Like this huge thing, and these are just the extra large peanuts. And I cannot get a freaking whoa. That's a very strong smell. I don't think there's anything better. Mm -mm. I promise you, the while I edit this video, I will be eating peanuts. Another one of my favorite foods is Caesar salad. I love Caesar salad, but for those of you who don't know, I'm allergic to dairy and I'm also allergic to eggs. Those are two very key ingredients in Caesar salad. So, a couple months ago, I started making my favorite Caesar salad from scratch from the recipe by Oshi Glows, which is one of like my all-time favorite vegan bloggers. I started following her blog. I absolutely love her. Amazing. If you don't know Oshi Glows, like, oh my goodness, you guys, check her out. She's amazing. But anyways, the point of the matter is I started making her Caesar salad and I absolutely love it. I'll put the link down below. It's really quick. It's really easy. It tastes just like regular Caesar salad. It's ridiculous. So I've been putting on top chia seeds. I love these because they add like a crunch, but also they're good for you but they kind of look like little bugs. Okay, now, exciting news. I have finally gotten out of my book stump thing, where I was reading all these books that I really didn't like and I never felt satisfied. Weird thing about it is that I went back and like tried to reread the books that I had read during that time that I was like, ooh, they're awful. And a lot of them weren't as awful as I thought they were. For example, I finished The Rosie Effect which I originally was like, oh, I can't handle it. It's actually not that bad. It's not like a good book. It's not like gonna change your world, but it's simple, it's easy, and it was light, and that's what I needed, so I enjoyed this. It was okay. I also restarted reading The Rising, nope, that's not right, Red Rising, and I finally got to the part where, well, I'm past it now, but it actually starts like having similarities to Hunger Games because on the back it says something like a combination between Hunger Games and Game of Thrones. I don't really get the Game of Thrones yet. I haven't been there yet, but um, people said to me when they recommended to me like, just get past the beginning. The beginning is so boring and then once you get into it, it's so good. And I was like, I don't want to waste my time reading a book that has a shitty beginning, but sometimes it's worth it. I'm not saying I'm in love. I'm not saying this is like the best book series I've ever read. No, 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 no. But it is okay. I'm not hating it as much as I hated it originally. Yeah, it's okay. It's okay, it's better than I originally thought and I actually am going to like finish it and read it. And then the other book I started reading, which is actually from my library again, I've been doing a lot of library books, is Our Daily Bread and I'm just like on the first couple pages. So this is my new read. I hate reading more than one book at a time but recently it just depends on what mood I am before I go to bed. If I'm feeling like completely relaxed and fine, I can read something a bit heavier but if I'm feeling already like super stressed out, then I'll read something a little bit lighter. Stuck my throat. Damn peanuts. <coughs> peanut. I'm gonna eat more too. I literally was almost killed by a peanut just now. I want you all to know, maybe this is a sign that I shouldn't be eating peanuts. It has to happen twice before I actually stop eating them because I like them too much. The other book I wanna talk about is actually something I don't have with me because I borrowed it from the library and it's called The Revised Fundamentals of Caregiving by Jonathan Evishan. Evishan? Evishan? I put it on my Goodreads when I, while I was reading it and I really really did enjoy it and I feel like it kind of got me out of the book slump that I was in, the reading slump that I was in, like I, nothing really was appealing to me. And then I started reading this book and it was super inspiring and so that's kind of the book I'll focus on this month to kind of talk about and do like a mini review I guess for. Basically this book is about a man who's kind of hit rock bottom but you don't really know why in the beginning like you're kind of like ooh something really bad happened but you don't know why like he's getting divorced, um, he doesn't have a job, he really has no money, he has like mega debt and like all this stuff and he has no family and he's like all alone. So basically throughout the novel this man gets a job as a caregiver and basically he works with this young boy who's 19 years old who has a disease where he's completely confined to a wheelchair and can't really do anything independently. And throughout the novel of their relationship and all the trials and tribulations that goes through there's flashbacks of Ben, his wife, and two children and so you're not really sure like okay did his wife get custody like what's kind of happening and as it goes on you realize 
why his children aren't really in the picture anymore and you also realize why his wife isn't in the picture anymore and those things are definitely connected and I think I enjoyed it primarily because the character was so real and raw. I really recommend you guys giving this book a read. I seriously enjoyed it and I really do think that it's just one of those books that it's kind of has a happy ending but it's not like conventional and it's very real and I, I really 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 appreciate that. So definitely give it a try if you want. I do recommend and that's kind of the book I recommend for you guys right now. Um, other than that, I will let you guys know about the rest of the books I'm reading right now on Goodreads as it goes and in my next month's favorites, which I literally can't believe that this month is gone. Bye bye September. Like October is my favorite month of the whole entire year probably, followed by November and December. Like that three month period is like, is literally the best time of life in my opinion. So I'm so excited to celebrate Thanksgiving and Christmas and more Thanksgivings because I celebrate both American and Canadian Thanksgiving. So I hope you all are having an amazing day today and I will see you all very soon. If you have any video requests, I would love to do them for you if you leave them in the comments box. And thank you all so much for watching. I appreciate every single one of you and I'll see you all very, very soon. Bye guys.